All right, hello everyone. Welcome to Common Solution. I'm your host Jasper Runheis, and today I'm here chilling in nature. Uh, this is one of my, uh, yeah, Common Solution episodes where I'm gonna talk on things things that that interest me. I think are important, and I feel are important. Mainly that we acknowledge our feelings. We as men, we are often taught to disregard our feelings and spend a lot of time thinking and contemplating which is necessary until a certain degree but at the same time we should also acknowledge that we feel and that there's a context that we're part of and um, this context is nature you know that's my surrounding right now that's the context of this conversation of our lives um, which connects us with something greater than ourselves. Um, you know, there's a philosopher, one of my favorite philosophers, Heraclitus. He um, didn't really study other people. He observed nature. And by doing that, he learned that there were patterns, that things were always changing. You cannot step into the same river twice because nor the river nor the man will be remain the same. We're constantly in a change. We're constantly moving in different phases. In some phases, we're more satisfied. We're more happy. In other phases, we're more down and we're dissatisfied. But these are things, apps and flows that come and go. And they don't define us who we are. We are who we really are. Something that cannot be put into words or even maybe it can be felt. And I would say it could be felt. I can feel who I am. But this knowledge that I get of my own being, it is the understanding that who I refer to as I, it's not in here. It's not inside of the body. It's not in here as well. It's not inside of the brains. But it's the I is the universal I. The I that I'm a part of. And to acknowledge this, is most necessary especially in these times where we seem to be detached from uh, natural surroundings about the, the impact that we have on our climate and uh, yeah I don't want to use the word climate change because the climate is always changing but it is dependent upon how we act uh, on nature and these are things that are not really that controversial a lot of people agree well they are still controversial but they are more well known but what is lesser known is that our mental capacity our mental projections our state of mind has an impact on nature by observing it we alter its course so let that soak in so what do you what do you feel do you feel that once you observe something you're in that sense the observed and that's the only distinction is what you create the barrier in between that's created by your own ego do you recognize this because it is so important that we recognize that we're part of something greater than ourselves because only this sparks transformation only this really sparks tr transformation and the more we transform the more we realize we're we're, we're, all, we're the all, we're the one, the infinite, can give it many names, many religions gave it many different names. This is who we truly are. It's still very, yeah, if you say that in religion, you are God, then, you know, you get the burnt on the stake at least a few hundred years ago. Now it's still just not accepted, but, and people shouldn't accept it based upon anyone's words. This is, this is a mystical experience that one can have can have so for this episode I think it's important to talk on change because I also need to change I don't know in which ways I need to change I do have some indicators but ultimately I do not know I'm still figuring out and that's the whole journey that's that's the course that we're on the trajectory and we have some steering I think if you look at the Stoics who are ancient Greek philosophical stream they made a distinction between what they could control 
and what was outside of their control. Like what is in, in, in our control is our attitude. We, if we change our attitude and we come open to the world, to all its possibilities, then we can grow as individuals alongside nature. And there's no conflict. There doesn't have to be any conflict between humans and nature. And there's already communities that are living towards this aim of living harmoniously with nature. Nature doesn't have any distaste for, distaste for us, but it's just that other humans have a distaste for other humans, or maybe for nature. But to be told, it's all one. It's all connected. And it, yes, it's it's monism, you know, that everything is ultimately one. But at the same time, it's a paradox. So it's also a multiplicity. You know, there's multiple types of trees. There's multiple types of people and plants and animals and and not, and whatnot but nature doesn't make any distinctions it sees a, a, a only a connected web uh, but to understand this you have to do away with all the mental baggage that we have because humanity is still very ignorant and arrogant and I also have to check myself out that I don't fall into this trap of becoming arrogant you know I've done a lot of research and it kind of makes me very arrogant. Um, I can become convinced I know it all, but I don't. Uh, and I'm also ignorant. I sometimes even don't want to know, just like everyone has at some points. But it's important to become aware of it because ignorance is ultimately what evil is. If you're willing to ignore what needs to be seen, what needs to be acknowledged, then you're ignoring parts of yourself. And by doing that, you will created a larger shadow that eventually will compass compass the whole light but it can never win it can never win shadow can never win if you go into a dark room there's full of shadow but you bring one spark of light and the whole room is lit so be a light to yourself set yourself free because we're all unique but we're all the same I guess we're not necessarily the same but we're all intertwined. We're all united. And this is this is some cliche stuff to say, you know, like Gandhi said it and many, many people said that, you know, we should be living together instead of fighting each other. But people are still acknowledging are still people are it depending on conflict. Because it does like when we're you know focused on being competitive we like to compare ourselves with other people in order to compete but truth be told we cannot really because we're all like authentic different di differentiated individuals uh, that all have their own qualities and weaknesses so never compare yourself that's the first step to violence that's also what Krista Moody said as well that you know I'm not comparing myself with this tree that I'm standing in you probably think why does this guy have all these branches around his face but kind of makes the picture and you know I hope that I echo words that resemble what nature intends me to say so being here I feel like you know being one of those branches that is able to speak and say something that hopefully can reach some people out you know so we're all from different backgrounds we all have different religions different educations and, and research done and we all think we all know it and even I think I know it but what truly knows is not any of us it's something that lays beyond us and that's nature itself nature is always more than than we than we can imagine it's so mysterious I mean, we don't still know how those ecosystems work and how we're influencing the ecosystems. I think there's going to be a mindfuck to understand that one because you can't have to recognize that your your consciousness is constructive. So by observing something, you're also projecting it at the same time. So it's ki kind of that's a, that's the paradox of life, you know. Uh, but it allows you to see that you're a co-creator, that you're an influencer on life. So don't be stepped into that victim mentality because that's will perpetuate. 
and this is also so some some note to myself you know because i also fall into this tendency so even if you do don't be too harsh on yourself just hold yourself accountable but at the same time you know give yourself some space it's like you know there's a part of you that should be wakening up well it should be awoken in uh in an instant and that's that's realizing what the center is and the center is the ego and once you get rid of this center you will naturally just like these trees grow into a direction that you cannot perceive beforehand maybe you can but under like telepathy and all that stuff but you will not um, well i don't know if you will but i wouldn't i wouldn't uh let my mind be stuck by it um so yeah i'm kind of hoping that i'm making sense i'm speaking from my intuition but i think there's some truth to, to what i said so i hope that it brought some value to some people so be aware of like our impact on nature with our mentality as well as with our actions and try to do some positive change and uh yeah be instantaneously free not be thinking that it's something that you need to grow into coming free because free is something that is just as it is uh, in the moment um, but also give yourself some time to grow so the personality the persona that's the ego that needs time to integrate uh, these lessons because I can speak on these these topics and it might sound that I'm the perfect guru that's walking around here but in all actuality, I have got a lot of work to do on myself. So I don't fully live up to what I'm saying. Unfortunately, I try to as much as I can, but I have to be honest in order to keep this platform, in order to give me these episodes and, the, and what I'm trying to do with the podcast to give that a good feeling. I need to be honest with myself and I need to um, live up to what I'm saying here as much as I can. And yeah, I, I'm... You know i'm a finite person in some sense so you know i i, I through this identification i can make uh, mistakes and i need to give myself some space to yeah get up and, and and be who i am but yeah it's quite a paradox we need to integrate the persona with uh, with the being the being and by doing that we come united with ourselves and with that our surroundings because it's all connected like I said so yeah people let me know what do you think and what do you feel most importantly on the issues of nature what are some things that you would like to see in your surroundings how could you impact your surroundings could you contribute in some project um, or is it merely being present and raising your consciousness and not actually doing something physically because this is something that i'm dwelling on a lot it's like yeah i want to help out the world but at the same time i think raising consciousness is actually what the betterment of society will be and that is like uh, john butler said make the whole be whole so eternal love and yeah like, be sure to like and subscribe i'm always chilling here in nature this time I didn't have to use my hand to hold it up. It's better for me, but I'll show you some of the surroundings. It's pretty good. So this is used to be our cultural grounds, but because there is like water that arises from the soil, arises from the from the earth, they cannot do anything with this uh, place. So it's kept like this growing for for quite a while. So it's not ancient. But it's pretty beautiful and it's pretty relaxing so i'm gonna do some more hiking like i said be sure to subscribe like and subscribe and yeah let me know what you want to see in the, the podcast uh what are your expectations i think you shouldn't have any expectations but people have this tendency to have expectations but what do we like to see in the in the on the channel let me know Peace.